Hi, Churins. Mr. Bruce here. Tonight's book, Merry Christmas, Mr. Mouse. About a mouse family at Christmas, their first Christmas. Before we start, let's get our glasses on. Eyes watching, ears listening, voices quiet, body calm. All right, we're in. Merry Christmas, Mr. Mouse. Once a raggedy little alley mouse heard an encouraging tale that a warm spot beneath a kitchen stove had just gone up for sale. Oh, that looks nice on a cold day. So, Mr. Mouse moved off of the street and settled in under the floor with his dear wife and his 17 children in a nook number 24. Mrs. Mouth gathered sock fuzz for bedding and crumbs from cracks in the floor, while Mr. Mouse found the best passageways when he went out to explore. One day as he ran, he saw something new and stared in puzzled delight. An evergreen tree was brought inside the house and covered with twinkling lights. The house smelled of ginger and peppermint. As Mr. Mouse sniffed the air, he peeked out as trays of cookies were baked in the kitchen that was just upstairs. Mr. Mouse and his wa mouse watched the gathering of family and friends that night while dancing and singing, the games and the gifts, everything merry and bright. Mrs. Mouse whispered, why light up a tree? Why dance and give gifts and sing? What makes this night so special? Can you find out why they are doing these things? Then they heard about Santa's checking his list of naughty or nice. And he wondered if Santa Claus ever thought, to bring gifts to a family of little mice. Well, Mr. Mouse crept quietly back downstairs and told what he'd heard above. All that fussing upstairs is for Christmas, and Christmas means joy and means love. Then Mrs. Mouse smiled. I've got a grand idea, and this is just what we'll do. We'll put up a tree in our little nook, and we'll celebrate Christmas too. Not a creature was stirring late that night except for Mouse and his wife. They were putting the finishing touches on a Christmas tree made just for mice. Just to be safe, Mr. Mouse tied a bell to the neck of the sleeping cat, then scurried from room to room to borrow a little of this and a little of that. He dragged everything back to their mouse hall while humming a Christmas tune and busily worked on setting it up until he transformed the room. A small sprig of pine and a bit of string make a perfect Christmas tree, and the glow in the dark star at the top shone brightly for all to see. Mrs. Mouse had been sewing pajamas, the first pair for everyone. Mr. Mouse brought down scraps of bright paper to wrap them when she was done. They covered a matchbox with tin foil to make table for treats and gathered up piles of gingerbread crumbs and candy cane bits to eat. Mr. Mouse whistled. Whew. It's time to begin. The children poured through the door. They'd never been to such excitement before in nook number 24. They danced to the tune in the music box and played musical chairs, hide and go seek, round of charades, just like the party going on with people upstairs.
Mrs. Mouse passed out all the packages to joyful cries of surprise. When children saw their pajamas, they couldn't believe their eyes. They all ate the crumbs and sang Christmas songs, and then by the firelight, Mr. Mouse told the children a story about the first Christmas night. Each mouse had a miniature stocking to hang on a little hook, just in case Santa Claus knew about mice and found his way to their little nook. Mrs. Mouse and the children went to bed after the cleanup was done. Mr. Mouse uh, fell asleep in his chair and he didn't hear when Santa come. Then he awoke of a sudden on Christmas Day to his children's shouts of glee. Each stocking was stuffed with a chocolate chip and a little bit of cheese. Then Mr. Mouse saw the box at his feet, and Mrs. Mouse had one too. Inside for him was a tot hat, top hat, shiny and black, and she had a soft scarf of lovely blue. Mrs. Mouse gave a kiss to Mr. Mouse. A Merry Christmas, my dear. I have an idea, and I hope you'll agree. Let's celebrate this every year. There's always a party at Christmas time, and there's one underneath on the floor where Mr. and Mrs. Mouse celebrate in nook number 24. And look who's awake, the cat. The end. That looked like fun. Okay, guys, I'll be back tomorrow. I miss you at school. Be good to your folks and wash your hands. Bye-bye.